here's the rest of our kinematics videos um, and this one is going to be a lot of about projectile motion and free fall and this is the third video i'm going to post the links to uh, the first and the second video in the description for this video so um, i usually cover this in the classroom quickly briefly and we do example and you can try this example on your own and see how that will work but if you have initial velocity let's say 20 meters per second so initial velocity is 20 meters per second and you kick it at 75 degrees and or you have the same velocity of 20 meters per second and you kick it at 15 degrees it will land in the same position and I want you to practice to understand why it happens this way. Or if you have, let's say, um, the same velocity of, let's say, 20 meters per second, and you kick it at 60 degrees with the horizontal, and which other angle do you think is gonna be? The one that makes 90 together, yes. So um, the other one is 30 degrees, but it has to be the same initial velocity of 20 meters per second so as long as the velocity stays the same so the 60 and the 30 will land in the same position and 75 and 15 will land in the same position and the 45 will not match them it needs 45 and 45 gives you um, 90 so 45 is just 45 itself but as long as um, two angles at which you kicking with the same velocity add together to 90 degrees they will land in the same position and it has to do with the time it takes and the initial velocity horizontal it both it both ways gives you the same number multiplied when you multiply them and you get um, horizontal distance calculations but we're gonna look at the different questions today usually I get an awesome students in my classes and um, usually have a few people who are really really bright and every semester and this was a student of mine that was in my classroom about six years ago and he made this question where we were covering this these type of questions so um what's given is a ball being kicked at unknown velocity so this velocity is not known and i do not know how far it lands all I know that it was kicked at 45 degrees and it went to the height of 60 meters. That's all the information is given. So what's given is the height, 60 meters, and, um, and the angle with the horizontal, 45 degrees. So that, that was all given. Oh, an acceleration, of course, is given as a free fall. So that is 10 meters per second squared. So that is all the information that is given. So I'm going to write vertical distance formula because I have vertical distance, which is 60 meters. So the distance h is equal to h is equal to average vertical velocity times the time to get to the top. So I'm going to call velocity up. And that velocity is consistent of two um, quantities. So one I need to know is vy and the time it takes to get to the top. And the time to get to the bottom is time two times time up because it goes to the top and to the bottom with the same amount of time. So I'm gonna rewrite this as Vy plus the final vertical velocity zero divided by two times the time to get to the top. But I don't have the time to get to the top, but I know how to get the time to get to the top. The time to get to the top is the change of the vertical velocity on the y over its acceleration. So I can write as 0 minus vy initial. I call it vy. I could write vy sub 0. I just don't want to write too many little things when I'm doing my calculations. And acceleration due to gravity is negative in this case. So this is negative. So that gives me Vy over G, that negative cancels, correct? So instead of the time, instead of the time, I'm going to plug in my time. So it's Vy over G. So now I have H is equal to 
vy squared over 2g. Oh, I can solve for vy now. So vy, the initial vertical component of the velocity, is equal to the square root of 2gh. That is your the formula. So now I have the square root of 2 g and h is 60. So that gives me velocity of 34.6 meters per second. Okay, then I'm gonna look at my um, triangle. I'm gonna make this triangle green right here. So in that triangle I have this is initial velocity, which I don't know. This is your vy velocity. And this is your vx velocity, horizontal and vertical components. And this is 45 degrees. vy is equal to v sub 0 sine theta. And vx is equal to v sub 0 cosine theta. So I'm going to use this knowledge to find my v sub zero so v sub zero is equal to vy over sine angle is 45 degrees and i get 49 meters per second so this 49 meters per second is the initial velocity v sub zero so this is v sub zero this is um, this part of the velocity where the graph is. So you found v sub zero. This is this velocity. And then to find vx, I plug in v sub zero, which is 49 cosine 45. But I don't even have to calculate that one because I already know that vy is 34.6 and the angle is 45 degrees. So I'm just going to write that this one is also 34.6 meters per second. Now I can calculate the distance. Let me choose a different color here. So here <laughs> I'm going to calculate the horizontal distance, how far it bends. So that is Vx, that velocity doesn't change, times twice the time up. Because up and down, so that's um, how long it takes before it hits the ground horizontally. So that gives me 34.6 times 2 times 3.46 um, seconds. And where do I get this number 3.46 seconds? My vertical velocity is 34.6, so it's going to get the height um, at 3.46 seconds, and then it's going to take 3.46 seconds to fall down. So my final distance, dx, so dx is equal to, I got 239, 239.4 meters. So that is how far it lands. So they asked me a question, how far it lands to find the distance how far. So I found the distance how far it lands. So this is my answer. And they asked me to find the initial velocity. So, and I found initial velocity. So I have found this velocity as well. Let's look at one more question. So we need to find again the, uh, the initial velocity and the distance traveled. And I'm gonna write down everything that is given. So I know the height is 20 meters. And, um, and the angle is 30 degrees. And I know that if the height is 20 meters, initial vertical velocity is 20 meters per second. But I still have to figure it out because uh, for this problem, I know. But what it was was 24. What if it was um, uh, 35 or the number or 21.8, the only number that you didn't know. So you have to practice solving questions no matter what. Um, and then you have acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And then I'm going to write, um, because your height is in green, so I'm going to choose, choose height in green. So I'm going to say the height is equal to average, um, average vertical velocity times the time it takes to go up. 
then I'm gonna rewrite it as that's vy plus the final vertical velocity is zero. So when I say the vy, this is this velocity vy, this is I'm gonna call vy plus final velocity vertical is gonna be zero divided by two, that's average. And the time it takes to get to the top is the change of the velocity, um, the change of the velocity on y over the acceleration. So your height again is equal to change of the velocity is um, it changes by vy, it went from vy to zero and over g. So that gives me vy squared over 2g. So from here I see that my vy is equal to the square root of 2gh and that gives me 20 meters per second if I plug in the numbers. So when I say vertical velocity 20 meters per second, I mean the vertical component of the velocity is 20 meters per second. Now, um, because I know that Vy, so I found Vy, I know that Vy is, let's change the color. I know that Vy is equal to V sub zero sine theta then my v sub zero is equal to v y over sine theta which is 90 uh, which is 30 degrees so uh, 20 divided by sine of 30 which is one half so that gives me 40 meters per second so i found the initial velocity that they asked me about so this is the initial velocity that they were asking about so this is this velocity that I just found. And I'm going to change the color for my x component. So x is going to be blue. So that is vx. So this is vx uh, component for the graph, the blue color. And my vx is equal to v sub 0 cosine theta. So that gives me v sub 0, which is 40, uh, cosine of 30. And that gives me meters per second so I found horizontal velocity and also from um, my vertical velocity I can see that the time to get to the top is change of the velocity on y over the acceleration gives me two seconds so I need this time this is the time up so this is the time up that I had in my original um, first formula time up so this is also time up. And then if I want to find horizontal distance of travel, so from um, where it got shot all the way till the end. So to find dx, I need vx, which doesn't change, average velocity stays the same. And then twice the time up. So vx is 34.6 times two and time up, we said two seconds. That gives me answer of 138.6 meters away. So it will land 138.6 meters away. There are more questions that you should practice related to um, the ones that I just solved for you, uh, these four or five online, or you can make your own questions and then check your answers. But we're going to look at more different types of questions before uh, we're done with this video. So in this question, they ask you, um, the ball is shot off the cliff that is 45 meters above the ground. So since I know the height and I know acceleration, I have the distance um, acceleration, d da formula. So I can find vertical velocity right away. So I'm going to find the vertical velocity. Horizontal is not going to change all the way through the path. It's going to stay the same. And vertical is going to go from zero to some final velocity. So the final velocity in this case is equal to the square root of 2 acceleration and the distance is 45 meters and initial vertical velocity was 0. So that is 30 meters per second. So now you know that the time it takes to hit the ground is uh, 3 seconds, but I'm going to write it through the formula. It's the change of the velocity, uh, vertical velocity over the acceleration. So you have 30 minus initial velocity divided by the acceleration gives me uh, 3 seconds. And then 
what was the initial velocity of the cliff it strikes 60 60 meters uh, from the base so the distance it traveled is 60 meters so if it travels 60 meters um, in three seconds then initial ver vertical uh, horizontal velocity was uh, 20 meters per second so that is I answer the question initial horizontal velocity um, I answered how long it takes and what was the vertical velocity when it hit the ground here's one more question a colony of troglodytes develops an important military breakthrough it throws a bomb off the cliff at a um, known rate of speed thus gaining point accuracy at its attacks in its attacks if the bomb hits the opposite side with 60 meters per second at 30 degrees with the vertical how long does the bomb fly and what was the initial velocity of the bomb and the distance it traveled so the information that is given it hits the other side um, at the velocity of 60 meters per second so this velocity is 60 meters per second and the angle is 30 degrees and they ask um, what was the initial velocity and what distance did it travel and how long did it take to get across so here's the information that is given if i want to find um, horizontal velocity so let's make it maybe green if i want to find horizontal velocity this one is 60 sine 30 and if you're confused about this you probably have to go back and watch the videos uh, previous ones from the right triangle and if i want to find vertical velocity and this one is 60 cosine 30 degrees so that gives me vy when it hits the the other side is 60 cosine 30 and vx is 60 sine 30 which is 30 meters per second 30 meters per second i wanted to put this in the box and then for the vertical velocity we have 52 meters per second so if it is 52 meters per second then i know that it took 5.2 seconds because change of the velocity of acceleration gives me the time and if it took me 5.2 seconds then the distance between them horizontal distance that travels before it hits the other side is average velocity on x times the time and average uh, velocity on x doesn't change which is 30 and the time to it took to hit the other side is 5.2 seconds so the distance between them is 136 156 meters here's one more question a car traveling at a constant speed of 45 meters per second when a tripper holding um, hiding behind a billard board is shown one second later the speeding car passes one second after the speeding car passes the billet board, the trooper sets off the from the billet board to catch it, accelerating at the constant acceleration, constant rate of three meters per second squared, and the car is traveling at 45 meters per second. How long does it take for um, the trooper to overtake the car, and how far does the car travel before the trooper takes over the, um, the car? So let's look at this problem. So we have the car's velocity. So maybe let's do it this way. So I have car and I have trooper. They both will travel the same distance from the billet board to the moment when um, the uh, trooper catches the car. So the distance um, the car travels is its average velocity times the time. But the time that the car will be traveling is one second more than the trooper time so if i say t is the trooper time the car travels one second longer because 
one second after the speeding car passes the billboard, the trooper starts. So if the trooper travels for um, t seconds, then the car travel t plus one second to travel the same distance. And the trooper's velocity is going to be, and I can actually write it, the velocity of the car is 45, it doesn't change, and t plus one. And the distance of the trooper is, again, average velocity times the time. So here we have t plus one for the car, and this one is just t because it's the trooper time. And average velocity is initial plus the final. Initial velocity of the trooper is zero meters per second. And the final velocity of the trooper is, so I'm gonna write the formula, final velocity is equal to initial plus the acceleration times the time. So that's gonna be three t because acceleration is three, initial velocity is zero, and t is the time that I do not know. So if I say the distance for the trooper, average velocity is zero plus three t, that gives me just three t over two. I guess zero plus three t over two times the time. So the distance for the trooper, I have um, 3 halves t squared, and that is the same distance that the car is traveling, which is 45 t plus 1. So now if I um, multiply both sides by 2, I have 3 t squared is equal to 90 t plus 1. Then I divide both sides by 3. So I have t squared is equal to 30. I'm going to distribute it. t plus 30. Or I will get quadratic equation where I have t squared minus 30 t minus 30 is equal to 0. And if I use quadratic equation formula, it's the opposite of b plus minus the b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. So your a is 1, your b is negative 30, and your c is negative 30. So now if I plug it in, I have x is equal to, Ooh. and my x is the time, right? So I can write just the time because I'm solving for time. So instead of writing x, I can say this is the time I'm looking for. So t is equal to, the opposite of b is 30, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 900, minus 4a, and c is negative. So I'm just going to put positive because c is already negative. So I'm going to say plus 4a is 1, c is, so that's 120, over 2 times a, which is 2. So the time is equal to 31 seconds, or 30.97 seconds. And that is the time it takes for the trooper to catch the car. And for the second part, we need to find the distance. So to find the distance the trooper travels, so I'm going to use this one, this formula. It doesn't matter whether you use this formula or that formula. So I'm going to use the, um, the trooper, the car formula. So the distance it travels is equal to 45. And then I have 31 plus 1 seconds, which gives me 1440 meters. Let's do one more easy questions before, question before we are um, done with this video and then we're going to jump to the next video. So a helicopter is rising 5 meters per second when the bag is dropped. If after 2 seconds the bag is... Um, after 2 seconds the, that the bag is dropped, um, what is the bag's velocity, what is the bag's displacement, and how far below the helicopter is the bag? So if the helicopter is here and it is rising at let me maybe move it a little bit this way so if the helicopter is here and it drops the bag um the bag in the helicopter is rising at five meters per second the helicopter 
and the back both are rising so when they let go the heli the back they're both still rising so the helicopter is going to be rising independently because the horse is acting for it to rise the lift horse but the bag will lose this five meters per second velocity and fall down on the ground so because it has initial velocity it has to be keeping moving up until it loses its velocity and the time it's going to take for it to fall uh, to stop rising because it's five seconds so the time it takes to stop rising is the change of the velocity over the acceleration and i have 0.5 seconds so in 0.5 seconds it's going to stop rising so it's going to take 0.5 seconds to stop rising and 0.5 seconds to get in the same position where where it was dropped so one second is lost for this path so one second is lost for this path and then now it had five meters per second rising it has five meters per second down and then we need one more second because they say uh two seconds after the back was dropped so two seconds later after the back was dropped so another second will pass and the velocity of it so let's say here this is where it hits the ground and then in another second its velocity is going to be so it was 5 meters per second here, and it's 5 meters per second here. Then it is 15 meters per second over here, because one second later it gains 10 meters per second. And so here is the ground. And um, they ask you, so what is the bag's velocity? So the answer here uh, for A is 15 meters per second. So this one is 15 meters per second. What's the bag's displacement? Displacement means from the positions where position where it was dropped to the position where um, it fell. So this is the displacement. So the displacement is average velocity. So I'm gonna call this one is h. This part is h. Average velocity and average velocity between five and 15 is 10 and the time is one second so this is 10 meters so this is the answer for b so this is 10 meters and if we see how far below the helicopter is the bag so if the helicopter has been rising for two seconds at five meters per second so the helicopter is rising uh, average velocity is five and for two seconds it's been rising for um it has rose for uh, the distance of 10 meters because the average velocity is five it didn't change the velocity and two seconds later it's 10 meters above and the bag is now 10 meters below so how far is the helicopter from the bag the answer would be 20 meters and that concludes our kinematic um lesson three um the last one is the next one is going to be uh four and the links are going to be in the description